During the course, we're going to see the limitation of that short read sequencing as we take a look at uh, assembling and, and analyzing genomes. And there's two technologies that came out in recent years that are a counterpoint to those kinds of sequencing technologies. And so the first one is called the Pacific Biosciences Single Molecule Sequencing. The way that this works is you take, so in, in all of the other sequencing that I've talked about, you have a piece of DNA that's floating around, and in fact, multiple pieces of DNA. It's either floating around or you attach the piece of DNA, say, to a glass slide like you do in Illumina, right? So with, with Illumina, you have a glass slide where you have lots of pieces of DNA that are attached. Okay. With the Pacific Biosciences technology, you actually do something different, which is that you attach not the DNA, but you attach the enzyme that does the reaction called DNA polymerase. So this is the enzyme that will add nucleotides onto the end of DNA. You then feed the DNA molecule through the DNA polymerase, and the way that you do it is you actually make the DNA molecule into a circle. The DNA polymerase is attached to the bottom of a well, and the well is actually tight enough that it's narrower than the wavelength of light so that when they shine light on the bottom the light doesn't flood through only some of the light can come through and that creates an area around where the DNA polymerase is where you can detect the, the fluorescent nucleotides so as you're adding a fluorescent nucleotide in this area you get an emission of light which you can detect using a detector at the top way up high and so you can see um, so you can see which base is added. The problem with Pacific Biosciences sequencing is that this enzyme can add about somewhere around a thousand base pairs per second. Okay, so that's how, how processive DNA polymerase is. So when our cells replicate, it's doing it at about this speed. When bacteria replicate, it can do it at that speed. We don't have technology that can capture information at this rate. And so one of the problems that these guys have is they can't actually capture all of the information that's being generated. The solution to that is to create the DNA into a circle and to capture a few bases here, let the DNA polymerase run, capture a few bases here, capture a few bases here, and then over time you're going to put that whole thing back together because you're going to capture all of the bases all the way around. Okay. The advantage of that technique is that you're sequencing each position multiple times. And so, in fact, on one run, PacBio has quite a high error rate. And so the error rate may be as high as 10 to 15%. Okay. But because you're sequencing each position multiple times, the overall error rate is much smaller, is about, is less than 1%. So that's a, an advantage. The other advantage that PacBio has is that if you have a modified DNA, and DNA gets modified in a whole bunch of different ways that I'm not going to talk about, but if you look in a general biology textbook, they'll talk about DNA modification. But if your DNA is modified, then um, that actually causes the polymerase to pause, and they can detect that in how long it takes them to read this amount of sequence. And so with packed biosequencing, you can actually detect different kinds of modifications on DNA as well. So that's a pretty cool technology. The main problem with the packed biosequencing is the machine is in the order of a half a million to a million dollars. Um, and so it's pretty expensive to get one up and running, and it's about the size of this table area. It's pretty big. <laughs>